Hi, this is Rachel, and this is topic 15 in our supervision curriculum. And today we're going to be talking about social skills um, from a direct service provider level. So social skills refers to a broad group of skills that would be working on or that would be skills used in social situations, which is, again, very broad. Um, Specifically, what I want to talk about today is teaching individuals to um, interact with their peers or learn from their peers, as opposed to uh, focusing the interactions on adults. Sometimes what happens for individuals who have a, a lot of support needs um, from a young age, they have a lot of adults in their environment, a lot of adults that engage with them, a lot of adults that support them. And those learners may have um, more difficulty learning how to interact with their peers because they're always surrounded by adults who are really good at meeting their needs, at playing with them, at doing things um, their way. So how do we sort of shift that back over so that our learners can better engage with their peers and um, beyond just being near their peers, but, but truly engage with their peers. So there's this concept of social competence and it social competence can be described in terms of effectiveness. So how well it works and appropriateness. So how, um, well, that strategy fits within the setting and the expectations. Um, some strategies, social skills may be effective, but inappropriate for that context. So for example, my learner may hit to get um, a toy from a peer, and it's very effective because they hit and the learner gives up the toy, um, but it's not uh, the best strategy for that environment. It's not um, the, the socially appropriate behavior for that environment. Um, on the flip side, my learner may engage in a very appropriate request. So they might sign ball for a turn with the ball, um, but the peer may not uh, understand what that means and may not respond appropriately or may not respond effectively to that request. So the learner's request was appropriate, but it was ineffective because my peer doesn't understand um, their communication strategy. Best case scenario, we find some way for our learner to get their needs met that's both effective and appropriate for that setting. So the individual might look at the peer, point to the ball and say, please, or sign please, um, or hold out their hand and say, my turn. Some communication strategy that the peer better understands. And then the peer is able to respond, meet that learner's uh, need, and, uh, and that exchange is appropriate for the situation. So, our goal is to teach skills that are both effective and appropriate for the setting and the circumstances. Um, one of the ways that we want to do that is to facilitate those interactions between peers and our learners. But just being around peers does not necessarily mean that they are interacting. Our peers might not be interacting with our learner. Our learners might not be interacting with our peers. Um, so what we want to do is to systematically help support our learners in their engagement with the peers by teaching the peers how to interact with our learners. So I do want to stress this, that the focus is on teaching the peer how to interact with the learner so that the learner can be successful with the peers, okay? So our goal is not to make our learners fit in. Our goal is to teach our peers how 
to better understand our learner and how to support them in practicing some of those skills that they can use with adults that they just aren't using with peers. So um, peers as change agents or increase for increasing that social competence. Um, we want to uh, teach um, our learners to interact appropriately in their environments and to engage with their peers. So a general plan for initially teaching a social communication skill and then setting it up into uh, use with peer groups is to start by teaching the skill one-to-one -one in a structured setting with an adult, right? So when we talk about incorporating peers, we're talking about this generalization to using the same skills with peers that our learners are able to use effectively with adults. So maybe it's their communication strategies. Um, maybe it's some things like turn taking or um, carrying on a conversation or um, uh, cooperatively engaging in an activity. Um, oftentimes our learners learn how to do that with adults because the adults um, might be able to better interpret um, the individual and their needs and therefore better able to meet their needs and respond. Whereas peers of the same age may not pick up on the same cues because they are also still learning how to interact in some of these ways. So start by teaching with the adult what the skill is, right? Once the learner can engage with the adult, now we want to add a peer. And with this, we're going to, you know, basically do it in, in a set of three. So I'm the teacher, I'm going to engage both with the peer and with my learner, and I am going to set up opportunities for all three of us to use these skills to engage together. Um, then we might pull in another peer and have the teacher step back. So now the teacher or the adult is coaching the peers on how to engage and continue to support the individual, um, uh, to support the learner, but the teacher is setting back. So the teacher is not providing them uh, the support directly to the learner, the teacher is supporting the peers to teach them how to support the learner and to uh, so that the learner can display those skills with the peers. Then you gradually add in more peers, you move to less uh, structured settings, so more naturalistic settings, uh, more incidental settings as it comes up. And then you eventually move to novel peers who haven't necessarily received all of that, um, that background training and support from the adult, but that way it gives that generalization opportunity for our learner to practice those same skills that they have done with familiar peers to now generalize to what if I'm with a new peer, what can I do and how does that look? So that's sort of the flow. And then you can start on introducing another skill and do the same sort of a flow to generalize it to peers. Um, when you are working with a peer, you want to teach the peer model how to engage in the specific activity. So you begin by defining the role that you want the peer to play. You role play with the peer so that the peer is in their role and you are in the learner's role. So that way you can coach the peer on how to interact with the learner as you pretend to be the learner. Then you're going to prompt and you're gonna praise the peer for the way that they have practiced with you. Once they can do it fluently with the adult, then just like with our, our peer or with our learner, we want our learner to be able to engage fluently with the adult doing their role. The peer engage fluently with the adult doing their role. Now we put those things together. So now the peer and the learner are going to interact together and the adult is going to prompt the peer how to support the learner. So instead of me having two people here and saying, okay, Johnny, now you need to ask 
uh, Susie, what do you want to play? What do you want to play? Okay, Susie, now Johnny asks you, what do you want to play? You need to say, I want to play Legos. I want to play Legos, right? Instead of me coaching both, we're going to, let's see if we'll do it like this. We're going to do it this way. So I'm going to coach the peer and the peer is going to help coach the learner if they need any additional support, because I've practiced with the peer on how do I support the learner? So I say, okay, Johnny, why don't you ask Susie, what do you want to play? Susie, what do you want to play? Um, you can say, I want to play, peer, I, I want to play Legos. Oh, or you can say, um, we could play Legos or blocks or cars, right? Like, so my peer is doing the prompting. <laughs> I don't know if that was great on the visual, but um, so the peer is supporting the learner and the adult is supporting the peer. Uh, you want to make sure that you have reinforcers for both the peer and your learner, and that then the peer is delivering those reinforcers to the learner. So, and then you're delivering the reinforcers to the peer. So maybe the reinforcers for the learner are playing cars. So great, the, you know, the skill is asking for a turn with the cars, the reinforcer is getting to play with the cars, and then the peer plays with the cars too, but maybe more than cars, they really like um, Lego blocks. So then after that interaction, you can give the peer the Lego blocks. And maybe the learner will also play with the Lego blocks with the peers, or maybe the peer will spend a few minutes by themselves playing with the Lego blocks or spend it with the adult playing with the Lego blocks. But the idea is that everybody's getting reinforcement. You wanna engage in the activity, you're prompting the peer um, and uh, the peer is prompting and praising the, tar the, the learner. Um, and that you are uh, praising the peer and you want to keep the sessions short and enjoyable. So if it starts to go awry um, or if it starts to drag on too long, you intervene and you move on to something else because we want our peers and our learners to have an enjoyable time together to um, keep it fun, keep it short um, so that uh, it doesn't become a chore for either of them to interact with each other. Okay, so that's a very short summary of how you would introduce peer models into uh, teaching social skills. I have another topic on social skills that goes into a lot more detail, but this is what we're covering for today. So for the assignment, um, you want to identify the steps for including peers in the teaching programs. So starting with the teacher, then at one, now there's two, da 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 you, that nice visual describe that in written words, right? And then number two, describe the prompting procedure for teaching with peers. So what was it look, what does it look like? Um, who is the adult prompting? Who's prompting the learner, right? Okay, so very short topic today. Um, social skills are obviously much more complex. This is a small snippet, and we do have a future topic that covers more detail about teaching social skills. Um, so if you have any questions or if you want to type in answers to those assignments, please feel free to put those in the comments and I'll be happy to answer those and provide feedback. Um, if you'd like to continue to get notifications when um, I upload more of this supervision curriculum, please subscribe so that you get those. And thank you very much.